In this video, we're going to talk about constituents and constituency tests. So constituents are groups of words that group together. So for instance, you might have subjects, noun phrases that group together, like the boy, or you may have whole predicates, verb phrases, like hit the ball or slept or ran across the street. And we need to have some sort of test to check to see if a group of words is a constituent or not. That is, do a group of words actually act together as a unit? So we're going to talk about four very basic tests that we can use to check constituency. Substitution, movement, do an A test, and then the did so test. Okay, the first one is the substitution test. And that is you can replace a XP, so some sort of phrase, with another phrase of the same type. So let's say I'm looking at this phrase, the boys, and I say, well, is the boys a unit? Does it function together as a unit? Well, I can say, what's another type of phrase that would replace the same thing that is the same category? So for instance, if I think this is a noun phrase, then I would be able to replace the boys with another noun phrase. Say, for instance, we pick uh, the noun phrase they. So we could say they play at school. And because they replaces the entire noun phrase the boy, we know that the boys is acting as a unit. Okay, same with the thing like play at school. If I say, hey, I think this is a verb phrase, well, then we can try replacing it with another verb phrase, like for instance, die is a verb phrase. Okay, that's fine. So we know that play at school is a unit and the boys are a unit. What about something like, uh, I don't know, let's check to see if the boys play is a unit. Well, there's a few choices we have here. If this is a constituent, then it's either a noun phrase or it's a verb phrase. So there's one of two choices here because the only heads we have here are an N and a V. So it has to be one of those two types of phrases. So if we replace this with another noun phrase like they, for instance, it doesn't make any sense. They at school. Mm -mm, that's not okay. So this can't be a noun phrase. This isn't a constituent. What about if we replace uh, this with another verb phrase? Like, for instance, uh, eat. Well, then you have the sentence eat at school, which is missing a subject. So that's not actually a good replacement here. So there's no val valid substitution for these three words. We can't turn it into another noun phrase. We can't turn it into another verb phrase. Uh, there's no other type of phrase we can test, therefore this is not a constituent. So if we were to look to see at how all these words are actually grouped up, we have the boys is a constituent, play at school is a constituent, and then at school is a constituent, and then each individual word is also its own constituent as well as the entire sentence. So there's different levels of these constituency, which we see in our trees. Okay, the next test is the movement test. And this is mainly for prepositional phrases or anything that is acting as an optional piece of information. So for instance, John ate potatoes in the kitchen. Uh, I see the preposition in here. I notice that this is a prepositional phrase. So uh, with these cases, normally you can move them to the beginning of a sentence. So in the kitchen, John ate potatoes. Now, of course, I kind of reverse engineered this. I said, oh, I see a preposition. I see this prepositional phrase. We can move it. But we can also just check to see which words we can move to the front. So we can't just move um, potatoes in the kitchen. So potatoes in the kitchen, John ate. Okay, so uh, this might be a constituent. It might not be. It's a little weird. What if we tried to move this whole thing? Eight potatoes in the kitchen. Eight potatoes in the kitchen, John. Okay, that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, so of course, this test will not necessarily tell you all the constituents, but with things like in the kitchen or last week, uh, those types of optional information, adverbials, some people call them, you'll be able to use the movement test to check this out. So just moving sets of words around the sentence. The Q&A test is a really good test. Uh, and that is where you ask a question. So if we remember the sentence is John ate potatoes in the kitchen, so if we ask ourselves, where did John eat potatoes? We could respond with a couple things. We could say in the kitchen, 
And because we can respond with just this, we know it's a constituent, or you might even just say the kitchen, in which case both of these replies are constituents. We always answer with constituents. Or if you say, what did John do in the kitchen? You could say a couple things. You could say eat, or you could say eat potatoes. Okay, so eat is a constituent, eat potatoes is a constituent. So the Q&A test is very reliable. You can also ask other questions. So let's take a look at this sentence again. and think, which other questions could we ask? We could say, uh, who ate potatoes in the kitchen? We could say, John ate what in the kitchen? Or, where did John eat? What did John eat? Uh, what and where did John eat? And when you can respond with these uh, constituents, with these phrases, uh, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, these groups of words actually work together. That's the Q&A test. And the last test is the do so test. And this is how you can identify verb phrases. So if we want to do this do so test, we're using coordination. So we're essentially saying, okay, we have our main sentence, John ate it in the kitchen, and then we coordinate another sentence with it. Like for instance, and Mary did so in the car, or and Mary did so too. Now look at what this is telling us. Okay, John ate it in the kitchen, and Mary did so too. Okay, so ate it in the kitchen is corresponding to this verb phrase did so in the car. Okay, so more specifically, we have this ate it the action being talked about with did so. So did so is referring to the action. And then we see that in the kitchen and in the car, these are both prepositional phrases of location. So this is just optional information. So we can see that ate it would be a constituent because it can be mapped to or represented by the words did so. In the third case, there's something more interesting going on. Because when we say, and Mary did so too, then did so too is actually referring to the entire phrase here, ate it in the kitchen. So this tells us two things with this test. First of all, we see that ate it in the kitchen is a constituent, and so is just ate it. Ate it is also a constituent. So, uh, and Mary did so too gives us the bigger one, and Mary did so gives us the smaller one. Okay, so when you're doing these tests, you have to employ one or more, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll have conflicting results across the test, so you have to find tests that you know are reliable. For instance, the substitution test is good for noun phrases, verb phrases, prepositional phrases, adjective phrases. Movement is more so good for prepositional phrases um, or any sort of phrases that involve optional information. Do so test is only for verb phrases, and there are Q&A tests can also give you uh, noun phrases, prepositional phrases, verb phrases, and so on. Okay, so let's do one practice sentence. The key opens the door to the room. So we want to find all the constituents. First of all, I'm going to rely on the substitution test. And I'm going to show you what I'm substituting. So first of all, I'm going to check the key. So I think this is a noun phrase, so I'm going to replace it with the word it, which is another noun phrase. It opens the door to the room. Okay, good. So we do have one constituent here, the key. Okay, so I'll just keep track here. It. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the door. So I think the door, the key opens it to the room. The key opens it to the room. Key opens it to the room. Oh, this is a little weird. The key opens it to the room. I don't know if I like this. Maybe for some dialects it's okay, but for me it's a little weird. So maybe the door itself, uh, maybe this test doesn't show us that the door is a constituent. But if I just make it the door to the room, I can say, oh, the key opens it. Perfect. Okay, so the door to the room is definitely a constituent because we can say the key opens it. Uh, okay, what about the key opens the door to that? Okay, so maybe that room is a constituent too. The key opens it, 
or sorry, the key opens the door to that. Okay, so the substitution test is giving us a few noun phrases. Uh, what about the verb phrase? Can we check this verb phrase here? The key falls. Okay, so opens the door to the room as a verb phrase, falls as a verb phrase, so we can replace them with each other. Okay, the key falls. Okay, so uh, that's the substitution test. We got quite a nice structure here. Uh, we got our noun phrase, we got our verb phrase, we got the direct object of the verb, the door to the room. Uh, let's take a look at this set of words here, to the room. Okay, which test can we use here? Well, let's say the key opens the door where? Oh, to the room. Okay, so with the question and answer test, we can find that to the room is a constituent. Okay. So it looks like we have a fairly good structure here. Uh, the key opens the door to the room, the door to the room, uh, to the room, and then the room. Okay, so that's a pretty good structure. Uh, if you wanted to draw a tree for this, you could. Um, so if you have any questions about these constituency tests, uh, please leave them in the comments, and I'll do the best that I can to respond to them.